This is mini lecture 19.4, Influenza. Influenza is more commonly called the flu, and long ago it was also referred to as the grip. Uh, the causative agent of flu is the flu virus or influenza virus. Just about anybody can get the flu. Uh, anybody who is exposed to it who hasn't already achieved immunity to that uh, year's strain or strains can get it. Uh, especially susceptible would be the very young, the elderly, and pregnant women. Uh, also, uh, people who uh, have um, chronic respiratory illnesses such as uh, asthma um, and uh, emphysema um, and things like that are particularly prone to it and those with compromised immunity heart disease and diabetes uh, tend to get uh, flu and complications of flu such as pneumonia every year and uh, those last groups the very young elderly pregnant women uh, those with chronic respiratory illnesses, uh, people with diabetes, heart disease, and compromised immunity should get uh, the flu vaccine every year. Flu is airborne droplet spread uh, as a couple of the diseases that we've talked about uh, are spread. Uh, this is a man sneezing. Uh, when somebody sneezed, when somebody sneezes, it can actually propel droplets uh, 20 feet. So uh, sneezes are a particularly an effective way uh, to spread uh, airborne droplets and uh, coughing as well can do that but sneezes because of how uh, violently uh, we tend to expel that uh, really um, spread those far distances. Um, you should not though try to hold a sneeze in. I know a lot of women <laughs> Uh, in particular try to be delicate or whatever and that's actually not very good uh, for your ears and so forth so um, you shouldn't hold your sneezes and coughs in uh, you should uh, either sneeze into a tissue and throw it away if you can if you can't do that don't sneeze into your hands uh, because that you know, of course, you're just going to touch something with your hands. Don't sneeze into your hands. Try to sneeze into your elbow instead because we touch things with our hands, but we don't tend to touch things with our elbows. So I know your mom probably told you all your life to sneeze into your hands, not into your sleeve. And now I'm telling you basically to sneeze into your sleeve, not your hand. But uh, s sneezing into your hands is an excellent way to kind of spread things. If you do sneeze into a tissue, throw it away right away uh, and then wash your hands as soon as possible. Viral particles then go from our hands onto or uh, when we do sneeze or cough they go onto surfaces and then other people touch those surfaces and then we carry them to our nose and our eyes and from our eyes they go into our nose and um, uh, get into our respiratory tract where they will grow. Uh, viruses, uh, flu viruses and cold viruses tend to uh, be upper respiratory tract and then they can move down into our lower respiratory tract fairly quickly. 
fomites in particular very rapidly spread the flu. Remember again, a fomite is an inanimate object that's involved in the spread of infection. So uh, anything that we touch uh, can be a fomite. So other people's pens and pencils, uh, any counter, a door handle, uh, uh, the uh, handles for the faucets, uh, anything that we touch uh, can be a fomite. So anything that somebody touched after they sneezed into their hands can be a fomite. And cold and flu viruses can live for several hours. Uh, of course they're not really alive, but um, we only need to get six viral particles into our noses and our eyes and or our eyes for us to get the flu. So it's so easily uh, spread. It's very, very contagious. So the signs and symptoms of the flu are uh, fever and chills. Uh, usually a fever is above 100.5. Usually the flu is going to be higher. So usually with uh, the flu we're thinking about 102 or more. And usually we're very, very achy, um, headaches, body aches, our joints really hurt. and um, we have a sore throat. Um, chills are common, so we're going to have a fever and we're going to feel really, really hot and then we're going to feel really, really cold and then really hot and really cold. And you want to do whatever is going to make you feel good. So if you feel cold, put on covers. If you feel hot, take the covers off. Uh, sore throat, you're going to feel very, very tired, very fatigued, and that's why you want to rest. Usually you have a cough, very runny, stuffy nose, and of course our body is going to be shedding those viral particles in those nasal secretions. So um, go ahead and um, have lots and lots of fluids and throw those uh, dirty tissues and so forth away right away because those are going to be fomites. Those are going to have tons of the viral particles in them. Sometimes there will be vomiting and diarrhea with the flu, but that is not common with adults. Uh, more common in children. It is not from the flu itself, but rather from our response to the flu. Uh, usually it's from the um, nasal drainage coming down into the stomach. And again, it's more common in children. There are some strains of flu that might have that with them, but vomiting and diarrhea is not generally considered to be a sign of the flu. That's kind of an old wives tale there. Treatment for the flu, the primary treatment is rest and lots of fluids um, to help wash those viral particles out, thin our nasal secretions. Um, uh, you want to, you're going to have uh, fever and so forth, so you want to go ahead and increase your fluid intake so that um, uh, your body can handle that increase in your body temperature. So rest, fluids, stay at home. Uh, as a big difference between colds and the flu uh, is that you generally do not feel with the flu like you can continue with your daily activity and you should not. Uh, uh, up to uh, 30 to 50,000 people each year die from complications of the flu. That's right, 30,000 to 50,000 people every year die from complications of the flu. 36,000 a year 
is average and a lot of those people uh, have compromised immunity, other respiratory illnesses, they're old, elderly, people with diabetes and heart disease and if you are ill uh, you're going to increase others uh, uh, um, others uh, susceptibility to catching the flu, uh, people that have uh, other respiratory illnesses and so forth. So if you are sick, do everybody else a favor and stay at home. Uh, there are anti-flu medications. Tamiflu and Relenza are anti-flu medications, but you have to take those within uh, 24 hours 30 hours is um, the outside uh, uh, edge of that, so you have to have them within uh, 24 to 30 hours of onset of symptoms. They do uh, lessen the severity of symptoms and the duration. They don't cure the flu, but they will. They um, decrease uh, the uh, time that you're going to be sick and how how sick you're going to feel. Uh, flu is not the same thing as cold. Uh, colds, you usually do not have fever and chills with a cold. You usually don't feel nearly as fatigued. Um, flus are sudden onset. So you start feeling sick in the morning by about noon. You, you generally know that you're, you're sick and you usually feel very sick. With a cold, it's like all day long you, you're feeling sick or you feel like you're getting sick, you feel like you're getting sick, you feel like you're getting sick. By evening you start feeling like, yeah, you are sick. Um, you generally don't have a fever with a cold, not nearly as bad, you don't have the, all the severe body aches with a cold. So there's a huge difference. When you hear somebody talking about um, having a, a flu when they're vomiting, diarrhea, that's generally not the flu. So there's a lot of myths that uh, people have uh, with the flu. Um, so um, because there are a lot of people that die each year of complications of the flu, um, it is a really good idea to be immunized. Go ahead and get the flu vaccine. Uh, people call that the flu shot. Um, there's also a nasal spray. The flu shot or the flu vaccine that you get injected is uh, a dead, a killed vaccine. Uh, it is a virus, so it's really in an inactivated vaccine. You cannot get the flu from that. Uh, there is an attenuated spray. That's the one. Um, it actually is a very weakened virus that is uh, sprayed into the nose. Um, if you had um, a weakened immune system or whatever, uh, theoretically uh, you could get the flu from that, but that would be a rare instance. Um, so when you hear about people getting the the vaccine and then feeling ill afterwards, that actually is a sign that it's working. Um, you might feel ill that evening or whatever, but that's a sign that your immune function is ramping up, uh, building up antibodies and so forth, and then generally you feel well the next day. Um, the vaccine is recommended for anybody in those risk groups. So um, the very young, um, elderly, uh, pregnant women, um, people with asthma, uh, people with COPD, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, uh, people with diabetes, people with heart disease, and anybody with compromised immune function should get that. Uh, there are some people whose immune function is so compromised that they're not able to get uh, immunized. Uh, people with certain cancers and so forth are not able to get 
certain vaccines and so that's why it really is a good idea uh, for um, as many people as possible to get the vaccine because that protects those that are so weakened uh, from getting it, it creates what we call herd immunity. The idea there being that the more members of the herd that are immunized, uh, the more that the weakened members of the herd are protected. Um, so anybody in the risk group, caregivers, and anybody in contact with those that are in the risk group. So um, people who are uh, working in um, uh, health clinics, doctors, nurses, um, uh, CNAs, if you are responsible for taking care of uh, an elderly relative or if you uh, uh, our babysitter, um, if you run a daycare center, anybody like that. So if you're uh, taking care of the very young uh, or the elderly, you really should get it. Um, children should uh, because they're exposed to a lot of other children um, and children of course um, are in close contact with a lot of other children and um, it spreads through a lot of hand-to-hand -hand contact. Uh, teachers, because they're exposed to children, and in general, just anybody who doesn't want to get the flu. Uh, if you've ever had the flu, you understand it's much, much worse than a cold. Um, generally, the flu vaccine, uh, because they do pretty well, at estimating um, the year, you know, in January, what it's going to look like um, uh, via computer um, programming, uh, they do pretty well. And so uh, generally, the immunization works well. And uh, so it really is good to uh, go ahead and get that. Um, one way that you can prevent, and you might want to do this even if you do get the vaccine, uh, get in the habit of good hand washing at least 20 seconds with soap and warm water, making sure that you get between your fingers, the backs of your hands, um, under your fingernails is one place where a lot of people miss. Uh, just a really good hand washing uh, and frequently especially whenever you touch things that a lot of other people have touched. Uh, borrow somebody's pen, um, doorknobs after using the bathroom, anything like that. Just make sure that you're really washing your hands well. Uh, when you come home from the grocery store, um, you know, after touching the carts and so forth uh, at the grocery store, just any time that you're out in public. Uh, hand sanitizers have relatively limited effectiveness because alcohol is has limited usefulness at um, inactivating viruses. Uh, if it's your only choice, um, you know, I'd go ahead and, and do that, but uh, hand washing is really the king there. And I would definitely uh, make sure that I got my flu shot. Uh, I know since I used to always get the flu and I I would get pneumonia every um, three or four years uh, as well. Uh, I have asthma so um, I get uh, pneumonia but ever since I started getting the flu shot uh, I've only had one case of the flu so it's been really um, really beneficial for me and I haven't had pneumonia. Uh, since then either. So uh, keep in mind, you know, a lot of people uh, die of complications of the flu each year. Um, if this many people died, if 30,000 to 50,000 people died every year of uh, terrorist activity, uh, we would do something about it and yet uh, there is 
something that we could easily do to prevent flu and yet a lot of people don't do it um, for whatever reason and so it's an easily preventable uh, illness so um, something that uh, many of us could prevent uh, so something that a lot of us could do to prevent someone else from dying so uh, something that you know you could step up and help somebody else from fairly easily which simply by getting uh, a shot